will be voting on a pastor. And so we need a quorum of at least 50. So I hope that you all can attend and stick around for the very important meeting afterwards. The call committee will let you know of the person they have chosen and the council voted on. And hopefully the congregation will go ahead and vote also. So just wanted to pass that on and we'll see you next week. Thank you. As it's been a couple of weeks since I worshiped with you last, I just want to reintroduce myself. My name is Elise Hinek. I am one of our Synod seminarians on the uh, in candidacy to become a pastor. And so I'm thankful for the opportunity to worship with you all uh, before I head on to internship. Uh, so a few more announcements. The Welka Convention will be happening in, on July 31st. You can find more information about that inside your bulletin. Lori Erickson died Tuesday, June 29th, and her funeral will be held here on Tuesday, July 6th at 11 a.m. And Clarence Norton's funeral will be held here as well on Friday, July 9th at 2 p.m. Let us stand together as we confess and forgive. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering song, hymn 576, We Are All One in Mission.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance in life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them. And you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The psalm is number 123. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord, our God, until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the proud. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we are able for the gospel acclamation.
Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, Jesus began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, to them, prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the clean spirits, unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed the oil with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. You may be seated. Take nothing for your journey except a staff. Do not bring bread or a bag. Bring no money in your belts. Wear sandals to protect your feet. And do not wear two tunics. These were the packing instructions Jesus gave to the disciples as he called and sent them out to do ministry. Bring only what you're wearing and trust that you'll be given what you need along the way. Anyone who has gone away overnight will tell you that only bringing the clothes on your back is a challenge, or perhaps impossible. Most trips involve packing toiletries, a change of clothes, cash and or credit card, a phone, and if you follow my mom's advice, a swimsuit, because it's small and you never know when you might need it. Nothing, bring nothing but the clothes on your back, the shoes on your feet, and a walking aid is easier said than done. Seven years ago, I was standing at the airline gate with my carry-on strapped onto my back. My luggage was checked and was in the process of being loaded into the belly of the plane that would carry me across the ocean to England where I'd be living for the next 12 months while serving through the ELCA's Young Adults and Global Mission program. I was really proud of my packing. I had successfully packed everything I thought I would need for the year. My passport, two pairs of shoes, a winter coat, about two weeks worth of clothes, my Bible, my computer, my camera, gifts for my new community, and a few other items to remind me of home. All of this was packed into a couple checked bags, and I still had room left over to bring items home that I gained over the year. I was so smug that I had brought nothing I did not need. I was as close to Jesus' instructions as I could get. However, I had packed a whole lot more than I had expected. Within the first month, I was struggling, crying out to God why I was sent to a place where I could not find a purpose for my presence. 
to a place that, according to me, had their theology and worship wrong. Unbeknownst to me, I had packed what was probably the hardest but most essential things to leave behind. Stereotypes of the country and people I would be serving, prejudice in favor of my own faith and cultural traditions, and other preconceived notions about how faith, life, and relationships should be. The more I struggled, the more I dug into these notions, clinging onto my comfort level and my ideals. The more I clung on to these preconceived notions, the more I struggled until I found myself distraught in worship. A place that used to be a place of comfort became a place where I questioned why God would send me to a place where I was not thriving. I was angry at God with everything that was different from what I thought it should be. And this cycle continued. It's so easy to carry with us our ideas of who people are and how things should be. In today's gospel, we see this happen when Jesus returns to his hometown. Jesus has gained a reputation for being an amazing teacher and healer, a person who speaks truth. Yet when he returns to the community where he grew up, to the people who helped raise him, he is met with disbelief. The people who watched Jesus grow up as a boy, who had seen him skin his knee and make friends and play games, could not see beyond who they knew Jesus to be, saying, who is he to teach us? Not only is he a carpenter and does not possess the education of the religious leaders, but he's also the illegitimate child born to a woman but not of her husband. He went away and came back thinking he is better than he is. They believed they knew who Jesus was and their preconceived notions had created an idea of who Jesus should be. These carried prejudices prevented them from seeing who Jesus truly is. And Jesus is amazed at their inability to move beyond their own perceptions. As a result, Jesus does not do any signs of power beyond healing a few sick people. This is why Jesus tells his disciples to pack nothing as he sends them out to do ministry in the following paragraph. Jesus knows firsthand the limitations prejudices place around life. As it prevented his hometown from seeing who he truly is, Jesus knows prejudices impair our abilities to know and understand ourselves, each other, and God. Throughout his ministry on earth, Jesus challenged prejudices through his parables, his disciples, and the people whom he welcomed and taught. When others tried to correct Jesus on who was worthy to listen, to try and prevent Jesus from healing the unworthy or inform Jesus of others' wrongdoings, Jesus did not affirm these, but dismissed them, calling, healing, teaching, and sending people regardless of the worthiness others tried to bestow. Preconceived notions prevent you from fully knowing Jesus. As these notions try, try to contain God into who you believe God should be. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus showed that death was not the end and that God loved the world so much that God became human, lived and died for you and all humanity. God did not choose retribution or demand payment from you to be reconciled with God. Instead, God chose to reconcile you through love. Jesus went against all the preconceived notions and did the unexpected, dying on the cross and rising again, so that there would be nothing too big or too small that would keep you from Jesus. Jesus did so to show you that nothing will be able to restrain or contain God's unending, unconditional love for you and for all.
It took me months to begin to unpack my prejudices and my preconceived notions while in England. And seven years later, I still am. Every time I walk into a new community, meet a new person, catch up with an old friend, these preconceived notions need to be unpacked. Unpacking prejudice is an ongoing process. I do not fully understand or even fully agree with the theology and faith practices I encountered at my church in England. I still occasionally cry in frustration when certain hymns are sung in church because it reminds me of the turmoil I experienced in that time and the pain caused to me and to others by the prejudices I held. Unpacking my prejudices didn't make my life easier. It was and is hard and painful work, but it did change my life for good. It allowed me to be filled with more grace when I encountered others. When I started to leave behind my notions of what proper faith and life should be and what my idea of who God should be, my understanding began to expand. I learned that I did not need to fully understand another person's faith and life to fully understand that God was with them, loving them. I was able to develop more empathy for the people I was serving. I was able to dive deeply into what I thought my faith was, and I discovered so much more of my faith understanding what was important about my faith and my life to me. My view of God was expanded beyond the boxes I had unintentionally created. This unpacking of prejudice is an ongoing process. This is why Jesus tells you to pack nothing. Do not bring that which will weigh you down and prevent you from following Jesus. Do not bring that which will prevent you from seeing the humanity and God's love for your neighbor. Do not bring that which will try to restrict who God is, preventing you from seeing the magnificence of the one who created and loves all. Pack nothing so that you may be able to serve and love God as God loves you, unconditionally and without limits. Allah Renee Rosarth may have said it best in her poem, Passover Remembered. Pack nothing. Bring only your determination to serve and your willingness to be free. Do not hesitate to leave behind your old ways. Fear, silence, submission. Only Surrender to the need of the time to love justice and walk humbly with your God. Let us stand as you are able to sing the hymn of the day. Number 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song.
together, let us profess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith, that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon, the stars, and for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery and corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Feel free to share a sign of peace with each other as you are comfortable. This is normally the time when we would pass around the offering plate. However, our practices have changed a little bit. So if you have not done so already and feel called to do so, please place your offering in the offering plate as you leave worship today. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not come to you, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Do we have any communion ministers who will be going out to the homebound or other, other congregational members? Let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you send the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who sent, who sent forth to share your word in sacrament with all those who are sick, homebound, or unable to be with us now. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. Let 
Let us join together and sing hymn 888, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.